Hello and welcome to this video on Composer. Before we open up the software and start creating our first website, what we need to do is create a folder where we're going to store the files and the images of our website. So here I am on my desktop. If I right click, new folder, and create a folder with a name relevant to the website I'm about to create. So I'm going to call this my first website. Okay. Uh, if we double click and open that up, you can see, of course, it's empty. If you're going to use images on your website, and I'm sure you are, the best thing to do is create a folder within there called images. Okay, you'll see I've entered that in lowercase letters, and I recommend you enter all your file names and folder names within your website in lowercase and avoid using spaces and special characters because your web server does prefer things that way and it keeps things neat and tidy for the future. Okay, double click and open up the images folder. Of course, it's empty. But I did prepare some earlier. I prepared one called photo, I prepared a footer, and I prepared a header. Okay, now we're set to go. Okay, let's open up our composer software. And you see the cursors blinking within the workspace, ready for us to start creating. Before we do anything, let's save this. Even though it's blank, best thing to do first is save it. File, save. Give it a page title. I'm going to call this my first website. Okay. Also, you need to give it a file name. As this is going to be our main home page for our site, we need to call this index. Okay, make sure it's within the location of our folder within my first website. Okay, and save. If you've used any word processing programs before, then these icons up here will no doubt seem quite familiar to you. And um, if they don't, don't worry, we're going to go through them over the course of these videos. The first thing you might want to do is change the color of the workspace, change the background from white to something else. I'm going to change it to gray. To do this, click on Format, Page Colors and Background, Use Custom Colors. You can see these are the custom colors. The background, click on that box there. This swatch comes up. I'm going to select the gray. OK. OK. And then to start entering content for your website, the easiest way to do this and to control the layout of the website is to use tables. So click on the table icon. This grid comes up so you can select how many rows and columns you wish to be in your table. I'm going to select a three by one. That means I can insert a header, a footer and have content in the center. Once the number of squares you require is highlighted, left click the mouse, that inserts the table. Next we need to change the size of the table and we're going to position it in the centre. So to edit the table properties, right click anywhere in the table, click on table cell properties. This allows us to change the cell properties or the table properties. So to change the table properties, click the table tab. The width, I'm going to change that to 600 pixels. The border, I'm going to put to zero. Spacing to zero. And the padding to zero. Align the center, align the table to the center. OK. Now, for that table, I'm going to change the color of it to white. So again, right click, table properties, background color, select white and I recommend if you're using text you'll use black text on a white background okay so let's change to white then it remains to insert the header and the footer so click in the header cell to position our cursor there insert image okay the image location remember it was in the images folder so click on this icon here um, in my first website images folder 
select the header, open, and that gives the location there. And you'll note that this checkbox should turn up. URL is relative to page location, which means that um, it's looking within the folder we created earlier rather than some spurious location within your hard drive. Remember to stick to images that you've already transferred into that images folder. Now, in addition to that, you could enter some alternative text. So here I'm just going to put header. When you create proper websites, you can be a bit more creative with the alternative text because it can help with the search engine optimization. OK, and you see that inserts the header. Similarly, we need to insert the footer. So move the cursor to the bottom cell. Insert image. Browse to footer. OK, alternative text footer. OK, that's popped up there nicely. So we've got the header on the top cell, the footer on the bottom cell, and this midsection is where we're going to type our content.